All right. What's up, everybody? Welcome to this webinar. We're going to be talking all things DAOs, all things decentralized governance, looking at different strategies for, for getting your feet with, wet with decentralized governance and managing a decentralized community. Um, my name is Logan. I'm a core contributor to the Clarity Protocol. Been at it, like I think, like two and a half years now. Um, and, and we're really excited about the stuff we're building and we're going to show you today. And then this is my co-founder, Justin. Hi, everyone. Uh, happy to be here. I work on Clarity a lot on the uh, user experience side of things, making stuff uh, super easy to use that's not so simple under the hood. Yeah, absolutely. So all these complicated decentralized governance processes, casting votes on chain, automatically executing proposals. This is a goal of Clarity to make it easy for any entrepreneur, any entrepreneur, any, any really community member to go in and participate in this new uh, era of organizations, this new type of organization that we're so passionate about, which is called DAOs. So to start off the webinar, I'm going to be showing a video um, here, and it's just going to kind of explain the vision of Clarity and, and why we do what we do and why we're so passionate about it. In today's world, trust in institutions is at an all-time low. Powerful corporations and unelected regulators are increasingly making decisions with no say by the people affected. With this realization, a movement has formed around blockchain because of the fair and transparent community and decision-making systems it creates. We are in a defining moment in human history where we can continue to let centralized powers become more powerful or pull some of the control back into the hands of the people. The time is now for communities to build better systems that ensure control by the people and for the people. Introducing Clarity, a platform to create and manage any entity using transparent decision-making frameworks enforced by code. Clarity makes it easy to create and manage decentralized autonomous organizations, also called DAOs, where stakeholder consent is required before making important decisions. Stakeholders' decisions are made collaboratively and executed automatically completely removing the need to trust someone to act on the community's behalf. Clarity provides organizations and entities of any size all of the tools needed to create and fine-tune their DAO for any use case through an easy-to-use interface. Join us as we build a future where the many outweigh the few. Awesome. Well, we hope you guys enjoyed that video. Um, it was a lot of fun to make as we, we discussed, you know, why are we actually doing this and really what is the core problem we're trying to solve? And, you know, I think one thing that really resonates with me is that there is all these centralized power structures throughout our world that, you know, they're, they're, they have these small groups of people that are making decisions on everyone's behalf, whether it's, you know, these large consumer AI platforms that are making like small backroom decisions are being made of how the models are trained and, and the end user doesn't really know what's going on. And that's just one of, of a ton of examples that exist in our world. So really today, what we're going to be chatting about is how to build a Web3 organization, how to build a, an organization that, that operates on top of, of blockchain technology. And, and we'll show you how you can use the Clarity platform to do so. So with this, what we're going to do is we'll have a few different sections here here that we'll, we'll fly through pretty quickly. Um, feel free to put your questions in the chat. Justin's going to be monitoring that um, and we're, we're happy to answer your questions on the fly and then we'll have a bit of time for Q&A after the session as well. So let me go into slideshow now here. So the first um, section is we'll talk about creating an off-chain organization. Now, we'll, sometimes what we call these is a web 2.5 organization. So you get a lot of flexibility. We'll get into uh, more of that, but you know, not everything needs to live on chain. And oftentimes community needs these lightweight ways to gather community sentiment and narrow down decisions before going to an on-chain vote. And then we'll talk about off-chain governance actions and just community engagement and community incentive strategies that you can use the Clarity platform for. Um, and then we'll go into creating that fully on-chain organization that has a treasury, has automatically executing proposals that after a, a certain threshold is met, after votes are cast on chain, it automatically carries out. So there's no centralized person needed to uh, act on the community's behalf. And then we'll go into, you know, what are those on-chain governance actions? What are they right now? What's available? 
uh, when we launched this, this infrastructure at the end of March? And what is kind of the plan to keep expanding this, this uh, library of proposal effects? So the first thing we're going to chat about is creating an off-chain organization. We'll go into the pros and cons. We'll go into the di different levels of decentralization. And we'll also go into creating an off-chain organization with the Clarity Protocol through kind of a, a platform demo live here. So pros and cons, I'll, I'll kind of talk through the pros first. So one really cool thing about off-chain organizations is the flexible governance. So you can have multiple tokens that act as influence in your community, in your organization. It can be an NFT, it can be a fungible token. One NFT can be worth a hundred votes. One NFT can be worth one vote. You can have the voting power calculated on a linear or quadratic scale. Um, and that's one really cool thing. You can also have different decentralization metrics where you can get, you know, who's able to create governance actions in this off-chain organization. Uh, is there an admin approval process before something goes to a live vote? So it's very flexible. And then we also have um, fee-free voting. So when you cast votes on chain to get something recorded on chain, there's, there's a fee that's involved. But with this kind of web 2.5 organization with the snapshot voting, there's no fee involved. Um, and one pro, you know, it's a pro and a con at the same time is your retained centralized control. So malicious proposals that are passed, they don't automatically execute. So you're kind of protected from these social uh, attacks or, or that type of thing um, with the core team being able to, to keep control of this off-chain organization. And you also get streamlined community involvement, which we'll definitely touch on more um, in a few minutes here. Now, the cons is that these off-chain organizations, they do not directly govern a treasury. So after you have a vote, it doesn't automatically execute to spin treasury funds or update governance parameters. This is really just a way to gather community senti sentiment, get on the same page so that you can always, um, you always have to have kind of an actor, you know, maybe it's a multi-sig, maybe it's, uh, uh, you know, just like a benevolent dictator per se that acts on the, the community's behalf. Um, I touched on this, but there's no automatically executing proposals. So you do have that reliance on, on trusted actors. And then it's not optimized for decentralization. And before I move on from this page, one thing that I'll say is like, you know, especially with people in Cardano in the crypto space, this, this goal of ultimate decentralization is like, you're like, it, it doesn't happen right away. There's a, there's a long process, right? So first it's an idea and you have a core team that has to work their, their butts off to get this idea off the ground. And then you have to have kind of a community form around this idea or concept or whatever it is. And then you can start taking in community input. And then once you have a strong enough community, only then, and you find product market fit, only then can you actually transition to an on-chain treasury with, with automatically executing proposals. Um, so, so it is a process of becoming an actual decentralized autonomous organization. Now, understanding these different levels of decentralization, um, on the left over here, you have less decentralized, which requires more trust. And then on the right, you have more decentralized, which requires less trust. So oftentimes on the left, you can have like this single wallet treasury where, you know, the community may know the address, but it requires, you know, one person to be able to, to put in, um, like control the seed phrase and put in the password to, to have community spending. And then you move kind of to the next level of decentralization, which is this multi-sig wallet. And these are a very awesome tool that, that community uh, communities can use, you can pretty much have, you know, five people on a wallet, six people, 10 people, whatever it is. And then you can set, you know, how many signers need to approve a transaction before it gets spent. So that's very cool. And then all the way on the other side where there's less trust involved um, is the smart contract treasury. Now, Clarity leverage something, leverages something called the Agora protocol to make this possible from an easy to use interface. And this is when you have a smart contract treasury where there's smart contract rules that surround it. So you have a, a rule that says, you know, what threshold needs to be met in order for an, a proposal to automatically execute? What are the governance parameters? Um, should we update those? There's, there's all these different proposals that can govern a smart contract treasury. Um, so those are kind of the different levels of, of decentralization. So with that, what I'm going to do is show you um, what it looks like to create an off-chain organization on the Clarity platform. So this is clarity.vote. And what you can do here is you can click add organization and you can put in, you know, the name of the organization. 
you put in a little description here. You can add your logo, you can add all your different social links, whatever you'd like to add. And then what you can do is you can control how decentralized your Web 2.5 organization is. So what this means is this first um, kind of form field here is who can create polls and bounties. So who can create polls uh, governance actions? Members with at least blank voting power. You can have this be zero, you can have this be five, you can have this be 500, whatever you want it to do. Now, if the option that you want to um, use is to have only admins be able to create these governance actions, you can centralize it in that way as well. And then the last check that you can have is require admins to approve polls and bounties. So here, if you want to require, like anyone with over five can create a proposal, right? Or create a governance action. Now, if you want to have, you know, anyone be able to do it, but you still want to have that check where admins can approve it, you can say, yes, I want to require admins to approve it. Let's say we, we can have three admins need to approve it. They have seven days to approve it. And then the last thing you do is you just add your snapshot governance token. So these are all the tokens I have in my wallet. They pop up. I can click on token allies here. I can say one token allies token is one vote and it's calculated on a linear or quadratic scale. Uh, what quadratic scale means is it takes the square root of um, it takes the square root of the voting power an individual has to lessen the effect of whales on, on the voting. Now then you just click continue. It's a free process to create an organization on the Clarity platform. Um, you just sign a transaction to, to kind of prove ownership of the wallet and then your organization will be created. So next, what we're going to jump into is actually talking about off-chain governance actions and community engagement strategies. But I wanna pause there, give Justin a chance. Is there anything you wanted to add to that or uh, anything I, I really missed in, in the creation of a off-chain organization section there? No, like Logan said, I think this is a, uh kind of the, the tool for people to kind of get their feet wet with uh, community governance and um, really kind of choose exactly uh, how much power you want to start um, by giving your community. And then uh, obviously the goal is to, in the future, kind of dial these, uh, tune these dials up uh, throughout time to, to make your decision-making frameworks more and more decentralized and community focused. Yeah, absolutely. So the next thing we're gonna be chatting about is off-chain governance actions and community engagement strategies. So a big thing, you know, community is king in DAOs. You have to have a community that, that believes in the vision, that understands you know, what's going on in the DAO so they can cast educated votes. Um, so we're gonna look at examples of off-chain governance actions, creating off-chain governance actions, and then kind of looking at how you can grow, engage and incentivize your community within the Clarity platform. And we're going to do that by showing how we do it in our organization. Um, so we actually use our, our community management systems internally. Um, and it, it's been a very fun process to experiment and build with all the other DAOs that, that um, are leveraging the platform. So you come here and this is your governance page. So you can see all the settings of your DAO. You can see you know, all the different information. You can see how much voting power you have. Um, and then here's a list of all of the different governance actions that have been voted on uh, in the Clarity DAO recently. So for example, we had a community feature brainstorm where you can click in here and our community put in a bunch of different ideas for uh, features they wanna see, Twitter integration, forums, uh, platform-wide incentives, DAO simulator. So uh, you know we're, we're able to crowdsource ideas from our community. Now, what, the options are to create a governance action is a poll or a bounty. Now a poll is simply um, something that the admins of an organization create and it has predefined options. So these could be yes, no, these could be, you know, for multiple choice of like what token should we list on our decks or anything like that. And then the bounty is different because what it allows you to do is not is the options that are being voted on come from the community. So it's a great way to crowdsource ideas from your community so that you can you know, expand your intelligence. We're all about a collective intelligence, right? So that's, that's what that's all about. Um, so what it looks like to you know, create a bounty. So I'll just do a, a quick example here. We'll say, what charity should we donate to? And then I'll say something like put in the charity 
we should donate to and why. Okay, and then people can come in and then put in what charity they want to see uh, donated to. And what you do is, is the person creating it can say, okay, people have till Friday to submit their submissions. We'll say voting opens you know, on Friday as well. Um, and then we'll make the deadline uh, the next Friday to vote. Then you have some advanced settings where you can show, you know, allow voting on multiple options or show vote count during voting. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much the overview of these snapshot governance actions. And then the next thing we'll talk about is like incentivizing your community and engaging your community because um, as a DAO, you have to activate your community members in a real way. Um, so this is kind of every DAO on the Clarity platform or every organization or community on the Clarity platform gets this kind of community management uh, and reward system here. So if you scroll down, you see a leaderboard. These are all of the most active people ever in the Cardano or in the Clarity DAO. You know, shout out to No Cardano, Jose, Leo P. These, these guys have been active in our community, helping us grow. Um, they've been awesome. Now, also, you can have competitions or time box leaderboards here. So we're have, right now, we have a 4,080 giveaway. It's running from February 7th to March 6th. And the top eight people are going to split up this 4,000 ADA. So you can see the most active people in this, or in this, uh, in this specific time period will be able to, to win the prize. Now, the next question is, how do you get points? So these people are leveling up on this, on this leaderboard, right? So you can get points by participating in governance. You can get points by, you know, uh, voting, creating bounty submissions, all of that type of stuff. You can also get points from referrals. And then the last thing that you can get points for is incentives. So right now, you know, in the Clarity community, if you subscribe to us on YouTube, you get 100 points. If you follow us on Medium, you get 100 points. If you join our Discord, 100 points. If you create an Agora proposal on Testnet, you get points. So there's all of these different um, ways that you can help our community flourish and help our community grow. And that's what we incentivize. Now, once you get these points, what do you do with them? Uh, what's, what's the point of getting these points? One is obviously we have these ADA giveaways, right? But the other thing is you can redeem for different rewards. So we have an integration with InMaker. And what this means is that you can redeem, right now we have it set up so you can redeem 2,500 points for a Clarity V2 NFT. And you click redeem and that will actually automatically send this NFT to your wallet. Uh, you can create a lot more, um, a lot more, you could have like a Clarity hoodie that's able to be redeemed. You could have a different merch. You could have trips to different Cardano pro, uh, conferences, really anything you want. And then when people redeem it, you'll get an email saying, hey, your community member redeem it. And then you'll figure out uh, from there how to get the, the reward to them. So that's pretty much it with the off-chain governance actions and community engagement strategies. Justin, is there anything you wanted to add to that? Yeah, we'll have some uh, exciting updates coming to um, this stuff in the next week or so, uh, just kind of organizing all of this a little bit better. Um, and yeah, definitely stay tuned. It'll kind of clean it up both for users completing incentives and uh, admins creating incentives. Um, and then the, the longer term goal here is to even have these points kind of feed into uh, snapshot governance power. So that way it's not only, you know, how much money somebody has and how many tokens that they have that's, uh, you know, feeding into the influence that they, they have on a community. Um, but also, you know, it's a little more equitable because if somebody isn't a whale, they're able to kind of earn uh, influence in the community, which we think makes a lot of sense. Yeah, absolutely. There's a ton of ideas surrounding that reward system, you know, Twitter integration so that when someone retweets a tweet, it automatically gives them points, a bunch of different things like that. But that'll be something we constantly evolve on and, and build with our, our community as well. So the next thing to chat about is creating an on-chain organization. Now, this is something that we have been building for the better part of two years now. Um, and it's been a lot of work and our job has been to make it super easy to create, participate and manage on-chain organizations, which is, is easier said than done. So what I'm gonna do is I'll talk through the pros and cons of an on-chain organization, and then we'll look at how to create them um, on the Clarity platform. 
and when we will be close to wrapping up and, and going into Q&A. So pros and cons of on-chain organization is the pros is you have no dependency on a centralized actor to execute proposals that are passed. All governance actions are recorded completely on chain and you can trustlessly self -ver verify your vote. And then you have just direct and transparent governance over a treasury, over different rules, over decision-making processes. Now the cons are there, it opens up some attack vectors. You know, if your tokenomics aren't super well thought out or you know, if, if uh, a malicious actor passes a proposal, it automatically executes. Now, the other con is the governance actions require on-chain transactions, which cost user fees. This is why we think it's very important to layer the kind of web 2.5 governance actions, which are fee-less with the on-chain stuff. So you can come to a pretty much come to a decision before you send it to, to an on-chain vote to be executed. Um, and then it just has a little bit less flexible governance because it's within a smart contract system. So there's a lot of guardrails and, and requirements for uh, creating this type of, of organization. So let's check out what it looks like to create one of these organizations. So we actually have it live on testnet. So if you wanna create a completely on-chain organization, uh, you can do it at testnet.clarity.vote and let's launch an Agora DAO here. So the first thing you do is you choose your governance token. Now in version one of Agora, it has to be a fungible token um, and you can only have one governance token over a treasury. Uh, we're working to eventually make it so you can have NFTs and multiple governance tokens and LP tokens and all that stuff as, as a governance power over a treasury. Now, the next thing you do is you put in, like these are smart contract enforced thresholds of your DAO. So the first thing is how much of this token needs to um, back a vote in order to automatically execute the proposal. And then you can say, how much of this token does one have to hold in order to have the, the permission to create a proposal? Then you can say, how much of this token does one have to stake to the DAO in order to um, vote on a proposal? So you get to set up those specific rules that are enforced by smart contracts in your organization. And then the last thing that you do in order to set up your on-chain organization is, these are also enforced by smart contracts, is you choose how long is your draft period? How long is your voting period? How long does it lock after the vote um, happens? And then other things. So how long does it have to execute? Different things like that. And then once you do that, you really just click submit. You sign a few transactions and it creates your completely on-chain and uh, decentralized autonomous organization. Now, once it is actually created, this is what it looks like. So here uh, you can see all of your Agora governance settings. You can see the policy ID that governs it. You can see the, the governor smart contract, the treasury address. You can see all the different thresholds for the DAO um, as well. You can see the contents of the treasury. Right now we have 1000 T ADA in this one. Uh, you can see your voting power for Snapshot and your voting power for Agora. And then the biggest thing is these on-chain governance actions. So in the Snapshot organization, you have polls and bounties. Once you create an Agora DAO, you get this button, which is called proposals. Now, these proposals are special because these are actually smart contracts that automatically execute once a vote is uh, once a ex the execution threshold is reached um, based off the DAO's rules. So, uh, so we'll do a treasury withdrawal here. So this is kind of the smart contract library that we have ready for um, mainnet launch of um, automatically executing proposal effects. So we have spin treasury funds, updating governance parameters, and then we'll have a no effect um, proposal where you can have an on-chain vote that doesn't actually trigger an event to happen. There's a ton of ideas uh, surrounding, you know, expanding this particular list, staking treasury assets, swapping treasury assets, uh, participating in different DeFi protocols. Um, I don't know, you could probably name, name a few more, controlling protocol parameters as well. So there's a ton of different things that will be coming to this list to make DAO treasuries more robust and more robust. But if we were to create a spin treasury proposal, you really just fill out this simple online form. So this is actually building a smart contract right here. We have templatized the smart contract. So you're just changing the numbers in it and all the code um, is, is abstracted out. So we're gonna send ADA out of the treasury. We're gonna send 100 of this ADA out of the treasury and we're gonna send it to this wallet address. Then you just select your stake you wanna make it with, click submit, 
and uh, you sign a transaction and that pushes out a on-chain proposal to your community where if they, it reaches the execution threshold, it will carry out what is stated in the, in the, in the proposal. Um, that is essentially everything. I think the other last thing to talk about is in order to participate in an Agora DAO, you do have to have a stake uh, in the organization. So you have to have the governance token and then stake it to the DAO. And this is to prevent double voting. This is to require that um, you have enough tokens to be able to meet that create proposal threshold to calculate how much you contribute towards that execution threshold. So you can just create a new stake. Uh, say I wanna make one of four, you click add stake, sign a transaction. And then it gets created. Um, yeah, I think that is, you know, about all the things that that we wanted to to chat through today. Um, but like I said, we one thing that we really pride ourselves on at Clarity is the, you know, while we are building for um, decentralized communities in the Cardano ecosystem, we're also building with you guys. Um, so a lot of the features we've built, like leaderboards, like these incentives, they've come through conversations with other people building DAOs. Um, so if you guys ever have any ideas about what DAO you want to start, what feature you need to start it, uh, we're, we're all, eels, all ears. Um, yeah, and then one other thing is if you want to get in contact with us, uh, we have the Clarity Discord. Um, we're always around in there. The Clarity Twitter, very active on there as well. Uh, the Discord is linked in the Twitter. The Twitter is at Clarity underscore DAO. Uh, you can check us out there. Um, but other than that, you know, we're, we're very reachable. Our website is clarity.community. If you want to check it out there, that will have links to all of our socials as well. Awesome. I think... Uh... We're good to open it up for some Q and A, unless um, there's anything else before. Yeah, dive into the Q and A. So if anybody, oh, here we go. Sorry, I've been looking at the chat, not the Q and A. Okay, here's the first question. I'll just start reading them out loud. How can the Clarity Protocol operating within the Cardano blockchain ecosystem support Web 2 or 2.5 organizations in transitioning to or integrating DAO structures for decentralized governance, collaborative financing, and enhanced community engagement while ensuring regulatory compliance and operational security? Yeah, so I think... Um, like we kind of laid out, there's definitely uh, places along the decentralization um, spectrum that we kind of cater to. So if you're kind of just getting started, you're a Web 2 organization, Web 2.5 organization, um, you can come on and you can set up some really basic kind of snapshot polling where, uh, you know, your members don't have to be submitting uh, blockchain transactions and it's kind of lower barrier to entry. Um, and just get the community kind of on the same page and, and used to the mechanisms of making decisions collaboratively. Um, and then kind of over time, you can kind of start by just tweaking uh, the, the settings in that. So maybe at the beginning, only admins could create, uh, you know, polls and bounties that go out to the community. Uh, maybe, you know, the next step towards decentralization is to let anybody in the community create these uh, off-chain polls. And then, you know, even further would be setting up a DAO around that community. Um, so really, no matter where you are kind of on that journey, um, we're trying to provide the tools that you would need to accurately, uh, you know, poll your community, gather feedback, and depending on, you know, where you are, you um, either enforce that or create a transparent record that the community can uh, reference. Any additional thoughts there before we move on to the next one? Yeah, I mean, I think it's a it's a great question and it's something we think about a lot in terms of, you know, at least for me, I'm like, I want, you know, soccer clubs to operate as DAOs and I want, you know, nonprofits to operate as DAOs, but the people within these organizations 
you say download a wallet they're like what are you talking about like i have to get a wallet and then oh go buy ada and then you'll be set up and they they just have no idea so how do we lower the barrier to entry so that these already existing communities can start to dowify themselves before making that huge jump uh to being an actual on-chain organization and i don't think there's really one answer um and then the regulatory and, and compliance part of it i think that's a moving target for sure um as as governments around the world try to regulate blockchain um and there's just no black and white rules to play by in this space um but at the end of the day what i believe is DAOs are the most transparent and in the future the most e easily regulated entities because they operate on chain so I think that's something that's going to take time, um, but it's definitely, you know, how do we build this funnel where people can come in, where it's not too technical, and then eventually they end up being something that operates on, on chain. Next question is, how does extending the clarity protocol with vote delegation functionality present a competitive advantage for Cardano? That's, uh, I think uh, that's an interesting one. So liquid democracy, I think it's what it's referring to, which is something that we will be adding functionality to uh, for on the Clarity platform uh, in, in the coming months, which is really cool. Justin, do you have thoughts on that one? Yeah, I think that, um, you know, it's the case with a lot of DAOs where, uh, you know, participants want to be involved, but may not uh have a desire to actively participate in every governance action. Um, so I do think that, you know, you can make an informed decision uh, who in your community you want to delegate your votes to. Obviously, you can always change that um, if the, the person you're delegating to um, isn't meeting your standards. Um, but yeah, in general, I think that it's a good way to get higher participation in DAOs. Um, which is something that that DAOs uh, typically have have lower kind of participation uh, historically. So I think that that will help to, you know, get more of the uh, governance tokens that are out there participating in, in uh, counting towards governance actions passing or failing. Um, yeah. In the future, I would love to see kind of like um, like decision specific or bucket specific uh, delegation. So for example, maybe if it's a marketing decision, I delegate my vote to this individual. If it's a treasury spend decision, I delegate my vote to this finance individual. Um, and having that kind of fine tuned delegation, I think would be super cool. Yeah, I think just to build off Justin's second point is that one of the beauties of delegation in my mind is like, okay, you know, let's take Sancho Nat and in Voltaire, for example, like if people are making decisions on protocol parameters, there's about 20 people in my head that I would rather have my vote instead of me because I know that they're more educated. So being able to delegate your vote to someone that you believe can make a more informed decision than you, I think is very powerful as well. Um, how can I reach out to you guys? Chamiri, my man, uh, thanks for providing that Discord link. Uh, yeah, we're always around there. You can create a ticket there. Uh, we'll be in touch with you ASAP. Is your solution Cardano specific? So we are primarily focused on the Cardano ecosystem. Uh, we actually have built the off-chain functionality um, on Radix as well. Um, and, you know, we believe the future is cross-chain, but we love Cardano and... Uh, I don't know if you saw the the EDI that came out, the Edinburgh Decentralization Index, but it, it proves, you know, everything that we've been saying for so long. It's like, this is the best blockchain infrastructure. This has been well technically thought out. They actually care about decentralization. Um, so we're, we're here to stay. Does it mean that we'll, we won't be on other chains eventually? Uh, no, but we're focused on the Cardano ecosystem for now. Um, when JPEG ticker, I, I don't have an answer for that one. Um, I don't know, but it's a good idea. Do you actually participate in Intersect in order to create the new governance? So no, we have not been very hands-on um, within Intersect recently. Uh, we've just been so busy trying to get this Agora functionality out and building these new features and uh, go into a bunch of different events and stuff. But 
yeah, I mean, we are have on the roadmap. Uh, we actually had a catalyst proposal passed to build um, a way for D reps to pull their delegators. So scraping the chain saying, okay, this person's been delegated to me for X amount of time and has this much delegated. They have this much influence. So uh, when big decisions roll around, the community, the D reps will actually be able to pull their community. Um, so we definitely are building tools for the Voltaire era. Um, we're doing the same thing for SPOs as well, um, but we should get more active in um, Intersect and, and actually being a part of, of the new governance that's coming. Justin, I don't know if you have any other thoughts on that one. Yeah, no, we, we definitely uh, want to be building tools for uh, SanchoNet and for kind of the next era of Cardano governance. Um, clearly, we're, we're very interested in governance um, right now. We're primarily focused on uh, project level governance, but we definitely want to uh, expand that to be Cardano uh, level governance. So uh, I definitely think that, you know, it's at the forefront of everybody's mind. Um, it's what ongoing debates are are uh, discussing in the Cardano ecosystem. So uh, definitely think the more tools that we can have um, to kind of synthesize all of those discussions um, and make informed decisions, the better. All right, next question is, what future plans slash developments does your DAO have on Cardano? How will these benefit your members and the wider community? That's a great question. I can uh, honestly pull out a, a roadmap here and we can talk through everything that we have planned uh, for the coming years here. One second, let me find it. Justin, I don't know if you have it avail. I almost have it here, guys. Sorry for the delay. All right, so future developments. So here's kind of a, a roadmap that, we, that we've drawn up of our very high level goals over the next you know, year, two years. So the first thing is the Clarity Protocol V1. Um, and what this will do is it will enable the non-technical creation of Agora DAOs, which we kind of demoed a little bit. These are those completely on-chain entities with automatically executing proposals with smart contract governance rules. Um, <clears throat> Uh, kind of, so this includes creating on-chain organizations and treasuries managed by community members who stake the governance token. This will also trigger the launch of the Clarity token um, and will launch the Clarity DAO. So one thing that we're doing um, is we are going to use the our platform, our protocol in order to operate this um, DAO creation protocol. So the people who have the Clarity token will be making extremely important decisions come April. This will be how much does it cost? What are the protocol fees for creating a DAO? Uh, these fees all go directly to the Clarity DAO treasury. How do we use the DAO treasury? Uh, what's the fee for casting an on-chain vote? What is the emissions for these different reward buckets that we have in place to incentivize the community? So that's what's coming in, in Clarity Protocol V1. Um, you'll be seeing a lot of different stuff about that um, on Twitter, and we'll be re releasing a bunch of different um, information about that in the coming weeks. And then we move to the SDK release. Justin, do you want to talk about this one? Yeah, so right now, the only way to access the Clarity protocol is through the Clarity platform. Um, we do talk to a fair amount of established protocols who are interested in building their governance infrastructure directly into their own platforms. Um, so basically this SDK uh, will be a way to allow other platforms to kind of inject 
um, the clarity endpoints, the clarity functionality into whatever site they have. Um, and this will all funnel back into uh, the clarity protocol. So um, if fees are charged, even if it's happening through the SDK, um, this will still continue to feed the, the clarity DAO treasury. Yeah, we'll keep tossing them back and forth and we'll move to the, the Clarity Protocol V1.5. So really, this is going to have, we talked about this a little bit, but the liquid democracy uh, feature in it. You'll be able to delegate your vote power to other members of the DAO. Um, and then we'll also add an option to add a co-signing um, stage to the proposal pipeline. So right now you create the proposal, it goes into draft phase, and then it goes directly into voting phase. What this will allow is to be able to have a co-signing phase after the draft phase where you can have a threshold of whether it even gets to the voting phase. So another kind of on-chain check there uh, to have a, another step to make sure that the proposal that's being voted on actually is wanted to be voted on. Um, and then we're just going to keep adding more proposal effects to that list uh, that we saw earlier. So. We had the treasury propose the treasury spin proposal, updating governance parameters. Um, we're going to have controlling protocol parameters. So the Clarity DAO will actually use this parameter to decide on the fees that the platform or the protocol charges. Um, working on treasury swaps with Sunday Swap as well, um, and then you know staking uh, treasury assets is something that a lot of people have requested as well, and I think it's a huge. Uh, huge benefit if you have a bunch of aid in your treasury and you want to decentralize the network further and make some yield um that that's a great idea and then we uh move into integrations yeah so the the key um kind of deliverable with integrations is just to integrate with uh the different platforms that the the organizations the communities the DAOs using clarity are already leveraging. Um, so both on the individual level and on the community level. So uh, this can include more Cardano native projects like uh, Ada Handle or Dex Hunter. Um, I know a lot of communities uh, work through discourse. Um, so like linking in uh, threads or forums that have happened um, and then just non-crypto tools that are more for community uh, and project management like Discord, Twitter, Notion, um, these sorts of things um, just to, yeah, kind of meet projects in the tools that they're already using and let them uh, see uh, information about their their governance processes in these tools. Yeah, that'll be cool. I mean, really to have just a modular system where DAOs, you know, they might use Discord or they might use um, a bunch of different channels to have conversations and having them be able to interact with where they have like their on-chain governance and where their governance hub is will be great. Um, and then we move into the Clarity Protocol V2. Um, and really one of the main deliverables for this one is to have those multiple governance tokens um, available to govern an on-chain treasury. So, you know, a lot of people would wanna use their governance token, their LP tokens, maybe they have like some community NFT. So being able to have more than one token governed in a, in a Gora DAO treasury is a big deliverables for there. Um, yeah, and then also just keep in increasing the amount of proposal effects there. There's a ton of ideas um, surrounding what else we could build on, on that side of things. Yeah, and then as far as uh, SIP 1694 integrations, we touched on this a bit, but um, basically giving tools to the participants in SIP 1694 tools to, uh, you know, make more informed decisions, to pull their delegators um, in vote, you know, in a way that aligns with what their community is actually feeling. You're muted, Logan. Yeah. And then the last thing is the metrics um, dashboard here. So I don't know if you guys have seen it, but uh, I'll put it in the chat. Maybe it's called deepdao.io. And really what this does is it aggregates a bunch of data. So you can see what's the total value of all the DAOs that they aggregate. What's how many governance token holders are there? Uh, what's the size of all these different treasuries? How many governance actions have they have? 
So that's really what all of this is about, is creating a dashboard to visualize on-chain acti activity indicators within DAOs. Is, you know, treasury size, active governance participators, token holders. Um, and really, maybe we could do some work to create uh, like a DAO decentralization index. Um, I don't know, you know how that formula would work, but I know that, that we've talked about that with a few people as well. But yeah, those are the high level objectives for the, the Clarity uh, protocol over the next you know, year or two. And we're really excited about um, what will be built on, on the platform for sure. All right, next thing is, would you say that it is precise to understand Clarity as an ERP for DAOs? Um, I don't know what an ERP is. So an enterprise resource planning software. So um, for anybody that does not know what an ERP is, it is a uh, software that companies use to uh, manage important parts of, of their organization. So, uh, you know, spending, um, planning, uh, kind of just their, their central hub of operations. So, yeah, I think that's definitely a, a good way to think of clarity. Um, we're kind of the hub driving the DAOs where decisions get made, um, you know, incentives are aligned, um, communities kind of oriented, uh, and finances are, are taken care of. Obviously for a DAO, this is a little uh, more unique since this is all driven by the community instead of, um, you know, by a, a board or a small group of individuals. Cool, next question is, can you explain how Clarity utilizes the Cardano blockchain to enhance security and transparency in your operations? Yeah, so really the reason that um, DAOs are able to have enhanced security and transparency is because they're leveraging blockchain technology. So, you know, compare this to a normal organization where there's really not a great audit trail of how decisions are made and, you know, they could say, you know, we make decisions this way, this board has to come to an agreement, but there's really nothing enforcing that. Um, so, you know, in theory, somebody could drive a decision through or, uh, you know, depending on who came up with a, an idea, you know, if it's the CEO's idea, uh, maybe it has a higher chance of, of passing through. Um, compare that to a blockchain based organization like a DAO, where all decisions are, um, you know, basically formulaic. They have to reach this predefined threshold. Um, it, it's just code. It's black and white. Yes or no. Did the community reach the threshold uh, to pass this? Yes or no. And since it's recorded on the blockchain, there's kind of no centralized actor that anybody has to trust um, to record those votes. So it's all out in the open. You can see, you know, this, this person voted this way, which uh, led to, you know, that decision reaching its, its execute threshold. Um, so that way there's just a, a, a lot clearer kind of audit trail. Um, and, and it's, you know, transparent to everybody, how decisions are getting made, where money's being sent, um, and all that. So in general, it's a lot more transparent, um, than traditional business structures. Cool. And then this last one says one disadvantage of a DAO is, is with many keys. If someone wants to decide buying all the keys, it might favor them too much. How can we deal with this? Um, so in general, I think that this problem, this uh, question is getting at the issue of a whale coming into a DAO and, you know, maybe having outsized influence if they buy up a whole bunch of the, the governance tokens. Um so, yeah, I think in general, um, for the time being, it's just very important to uh, be considerate when setting your uh, DAO thresholds. Um, moving into the future, this is definitely something that we're interested in, is, is exploring, you know, new ways of calculating governance power on chain. That's not just one token, uh, one vote. Um, so how can we, you know, use things like quadratic voting um, or, or DIDs or, or anything down that line um, to, you know, kind of restrict 
uh, the influence that that one person can have. Um, again, that's not going to be a solution that necessarily resonates with every community, but there are certain applications that DAOs are being used in um, where you may want to limit kind of the the uh, representation that that one person can have. Yeah, and then there's there's one question in the chat. Um, do you plan on providing any way slash software or solution to onboard individuals into existing DAOs? People might need some education slash knowledge slash transfer slash context of what happened in the past to give a good contribution in the present. Um, so for the first question, that's something that I'm pretty passionate about is like, how do we go from zero to DAO member as fast as possible? Um, and one way that we've been trying this out is right now, actually, if you create a new Vesper wallet and then you connect your wallet into um, the, the Clarity platform, you automatically get dropped an NFT. It's like, oh, surprise, congratulations, you got a new crystal. Um, and this automatically puts people into the DAO. They get influence in all the, the snapshot polling that the Clarity DAO uh, pans out. So that's one way we've been doing it. But eventually, I think you could honestly have um, decentralized organizations where those points that you gather. So say you get 10 points for scanning a QR code um, and then you have 10 voting power in the organization. I think there's a lot of different ways to go about this onboarding conundrum. Um, and I think that's a, a huge problem in Web3, right? Is you, this common person has to download a wallet. They have to go to a centralized exchange. They have to get ADA, they have to get ETH, they have to do all these things uh, before they can actually participate in DeFi and participate in DAOs. Um, so yeah, we're, we're definitely doing some work to make it so that, okay, you get a wallet, you get a governance token and, and you're in. And from there you can explore. Yeah, and then as far as uh, just getting caught up as far as uh, the existing knowledge and and decisions that have been made in the past for a DAO, I think that we're, um, you know, in the early innings, obviously, of DAO uh, adoption in Cardano. Um, but in the future, you know, look two, three years out into the future, I do think that this definitely becomes uh, more of a problem as, you know, somebody just joining a DAO at that point can, uh, you know, needs to have some context of what has been happening in the DAO over the past three years. Um, I think something that's really potentially exciting kind of in that, in that vein is all of the recent developments in LLMs. I think it would be really awesome to be able to feed just proposals and different forums and, and comments and, and ideas through an LLM and let people, you know, ask questions about decision, decisions that have been made in the past. Um, just because once it reaches that threshold of, you know, there's been 500 decisions made, um, it does start to become a bit, uh, you know, impossible to, to keep up with um, all, every, everything happening across all DAOs. So, uh, yeah, I think the, the future will definitely um, require some uh, synthesis of all of that uh, knowledge. Absolutely. So we'll stick around here for about 20 more seconds, see if any other questions pop in. Um, but just to fill the air while we wait to see that, appreciate everyone coming. Um, like I said before, um, we really do love to work with DAO builders. Like there's so many big ideas, whether it's a DAO that has a bunch of sub DAOs that are, that are uh, like property that is owned by a decentralized group of people or DeFi protocols that want to operate using a decentralized treasury or really anything in between to, from real fi to, to DeFi, this new organizational structure is something we're really passionate about. And we love to help uh, people go from idea to, to DAO. Um, and we're really working hard to build the tools to make that happen so that decentralization can and proliferate into existing systems and, and all these people are finding new use cases for it. So with that being said, appreciate everyone coming. Um, and we're always around in the Discord and Twitter, wherever you want to find us. We're happy to chat. Thank you guys very much. Thank you, everyone.